All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is July 31st, 2021. And you're thinking, man, I thought it was your last video and your last video and your last video. Guys, all I could say is we know we're here. All right. I just I, I want you guys to start by reminding yourselves, especially those who've maybe at least been around for a little while, that are starting to understand or that have understood the revelations that have been revealed here in this ministry for the past almost four years. Just remind yourselves of the mind-blowing revelation that came when you first began to understand this intro video, this first intro video of who the Gospels were speaking to. A mystery that had been hidden for centuries has now been revealed in these end times, in these end days. A lot of people will say, what are you talking about in the end days? We're not in the end times yet. Well, in the big picture we are, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we get going. But guys, remember these things. Remember what the, the revelation of these meant and what they still mean. The revelation of, of the colors of the robes, the garments that Jesus was given going to the cross, the, the difference of of the transfiguration stories of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which in the end is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. We're actually going we're gonna to add that into the mix here in today's teaching as well. <clears throat> what all of this meant, why it was about an eight days and what it means, why after six days for Mark, why after six days for Matthew, all of these things have proven themselves over and over and over from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, to the end of Revelation. We have understood what the Lord has given us to reveal. It's all true. The, the, the 14 years, that, that's the next revelation, right? We, these are the two keys in this intro series, the revealed, uh, the revealed end time study note series. For anybody that's new, you want to come and watch these things. You can click on the show more in the description box and you can get the printout of uh, whenever you see printouts typed out things like this that I read from, you can get them in the description box, download them or print them yourself, or you can go to the website at ministryrevealed.com and you could download them from there and download all the videos with one click of the mouse. So just click download and there it is. All right. <clears throat> Remind yourself of these 14 years and the revelation of the 14 years. That, that the 14 years is the revelation of the coming end of days of the seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. However, there's that bigger picture, right? There's that Jacob story that was then revealed to us. That Jacob story of 20 years and then he makes a covenant. It's that is the big story. And in that final year, then he has his final child, right, Benjamin? It's the story of 21 years. And that story of the 21 years are the final seven, seven, seven years. They're the final three sets of seven in the final count to the final Jubilee. And when these sevens are over, it will be the final Jubilee year as we all know, right? The seven, 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 21 years, and then it'll be the Jubilee. It was like there was the four sevens that came first. These are the final three. So to say that we're, we're in the end times, yes, in a sense, not the, not the way people think it, but in the, in the, in the true sense of it, yes, because the scriptures reveal to us that even though it's two sets of seven left to come, there was one that was the setup, the one drawing in the bride, the one working hard to get that Gentile bride first. This is that season and time we're in. The, the, <laughs> for any, this is why I'm bringing it up <clears throat> because. It is it has revealed so much. We now understand in the third video here why it is 
that the whole world only believes the tribulation is seven years. Because we've all been taught from Matthew, who's written to Judah. He's written to the Jews. Mark is writing is written to the to Israel and the sleeping church, the Gentiles grafted in, and Luke is written to the bride of Christ. So we understand looking at the rest of the world when they say, no, it's only seven, it's only seven, and they always go to Matthew 24. We can prove why they do it with scripture, and that's revealed in the very first revelation. When you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, everything begins to open up. And when you understand that it's Luke, Mark, and Matthew, the bride of Christ gone, and then Luke's discourse, which is a 40-day period of time, when that's over, then you've got Mark's discourse, which is the seven years of seals portion of time. And when you see that and you understand it, you understand that Mark's group is the portion of seven years of seals, the first seven of the 14, that has been missed, just like the 40 of Luke. The 40 of Luke has been missed. The seven of Mark has been missed. And we all see only Matthews because we've only been taught from Matthew. So it's like being at the end of Mark and all that's left is Matthew seven years. That's what the world believes. That's been revealed here in this ministry. The truth of it has been revealed. The understanding of it has been revealed. The mystery of the 40 days in the fifth video is the 40 days, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Son of Man who's going to be on the earth warning for the 40 days as he said he would do as Jonah did. How was this missed? Because they never understood who the Gospels were speaking to. It always goes back to the first revelation. If you don't know who the Gospels are speaking to, then you're not going to understand who Luke and Mark are speaking to. And that revelation revealed that Luke's discourse is the 40 days. That Mark's discourse is the first seven of the 14. And that Matthew's discourse is the second seven of the 14. It, we revealed we revealed that the, the arguments and the debates of pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib, which one is true? No, I believe this. No, I, I used to believe this. Now I, no, doesn't matter anymore. We've revealed it here. All three of them are true. Why? Because the Gospels have revealed it. Luke is pre, Mark is mid, Matthew is post. <laughs> Guys, oh, and then how about this one? <clears throat> Let alone Daniel 9. The only way to ever understand Daniel 9 is when you finally come to understand that the truth is 14 years. You understand that the first attack, when this attack comes upon Jerusalem, this attack is going to remove them from the land for seven years. It's the only way you're ever going to really understand the book of Daniel in chapter 9, where everybody thinks it's seven years. When really the first place where it says seven weeks, that's the seven weeks of seals. They're, they're not talked about. And then it's talking about the seven years of trumpets. You see why? Because they have to be removed from the land for seven years for their disobedience over the last 50 years that they've had Jerusalem. And then how about this one? I was just talking about this one with my wife, and we're going we're gonna to integrate this into today's video as well a little bit with one of the churches. The mystery of the seven churches. <clears throat> the end time understanding of the seven churches has never been revealed either until this ministry. But you know what? We couldn't understand it until the Gospels were revealed and until the 14 years were revealed. Then this in the past year came to be revealed. The mystery of the seven churches in how they apply in the is to come. We know there was a, a was. We know there's an is like right now we're in the final church, Laodicean church. But when the tribulation comes, 
those seven churches, the cycle will start again for the final time. Just like it was in the was. As it is now in the is and we're in the final one. Now, even though we're in the Laodicean church, it doesn't mean that all those other churches are gone. It's just now is the focus of the fallen away Laodicean church. But there's an end. There is a tribulation portion that will come to be revealed of the seven churches during the 14 years. And we've talked about this and it's in this video. The things that we've been given to reveal, brothers and sisters, have been mysteries since the foundation of the earth. Oh, Al, and now you're really pumping yourself up there. No, <laughs> it's truth. Come and watch this intro series and understand for yourself. You see, as I was preparing for this video, I was getting pumped up because not only this, but if you want to get pumped up here in this ministry and you've been watching this ministry and you have some of these understandings, come and re-watch or, or get the book, right? You can get the book for free PDF from the website or in the description box under this video, or you can download it uh, uh, from the website. You can download the auto audio. You can you can buy the uh, uh, the ebook or the paperback, which is great, so that you can you can hand it to people and let people pass it around and share it with others. Okay, so you can get the book and go at your own pace and see these things revealed to you there as well. <clears throat> because I'll tell you what, man. If ever you're feeling <laughs> a little bit down and you're saying, Lord, please, have we not understood? <laughs> Believe me, that's a conversation I have quite a bit. I was just talking. Who was it? I was talking with Mark the other day. I was talking with Mike the other day. I was talking to my wife the last couple of days. <laughs> and of course, this is a topic that we have. But every time I start to ponder these things that have been revealed, Every single time I do, I'm instantly reminded, you've understood. There's no way you can do this from Genesis to Revelation and have everything fall in line within this great revelation for it to suddenly not equal anything. It's not kind of impossible. It's literally impossible. Brothers and sisters, we've understood. We're, we're at the time frame now. We're at the point where we are now where it's nitty gritty. Okay? We're coming into the nitty gritty of details. And we're going to get into some of those nitty gritty details today. But I wanted to share this at the start, like I said, to, to let it pump you up, to, to let his word revive you. That's what it's all about. It's his word. And I've said it here so many times. You hear me in videos so often. It's the revealing. It's the, it's the, it's the sharing of the revelation of his word that just pumps me up. I just love it. I love him. I love digging into him. I love getting to know him more and more and more. Because even though this is a ministry of the revelation of the is to come, the revelation that comes to be revealed in the is to come in so many cases helps us bring clarity and revelation to things that have been misunderstood in the was and in the is. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Okay? So anybody that's new, take your time to watch these. I promise you, it'll be worth your time. Watch one, two, three. Uh, then go to like six, seven if you want. Jump to nine, ten, eleven after. It's, I promise you, it'll be worth your time. Now the question is, do you have enough time left to watch them all? <laughs> all right. This is what we're going to go into here some more today. But we're going to do it as we continue the progression or, 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 or tie it in, sorry, as we tie it in to this understanding that we know. And that's one of the reasons I, I was kind of bringing in this big picture and 
talking about uh, uh, Jacob and his wives. Okay, we have the revelation of what it means. We understand that Jacob working for his wives is a picture of the first seven easy years that the Holy Spirit or, or fast passing years that Jacob says he worked for his first wife. Well, expecting Rachel, but got Leah, right? Leah is a type and shadow of the Gentile bride, the one he didn't want. Okay. And so it's a type and shadow of the first seven years. You see, Luke, it's the, it's the bride of Christ, the Gentile bride. That's why when Christ was going to the cross, they arrayed him in a gorgeous white robe, it said. And then what happens? After he marries her, he gets Rachel, but he still has to fulfill seven more years for Rachel. Why isn't that clicking? He still has to fulfill seven more years for Rachel before she can officially be his. All right? And then what happens? Then he works six more years for the cattle. And at the end of those six years, which is now 20 years we read in Scripture, he makes a covenant with his father-in-law. And then Benjamin is born. Okay? It's the literal story. It's the, it's the true revelation of the end of days. You see, we can show this and have shown it in so many places. Let me show you this one. Oh, it's in 31. In Genesis 31, this is when you find out how long he'd worked for his father-in-law. Right? Verse 41. Right here. 20 years he worked for his father-in-law. 14 years for his two daughters. What is the 14 years for his two daughters? The first seven where he got nobody. He didn't get to lie with any of them or nothing. He had to fulfill seven years before he got one. And then after he had the one week wedding, then he was able to get Rachel. And then he still had to fulfill seven years for her. So what's the total? 14 years. Not the 14 years that we talk about in this ministry. Because we don't talk so much about these easy seven or the fast passing seven because he was so in love with her that we talk about. We talk about the next two sets of seven that are coming. Okay? But in the story with Jacob, this is the 14. And then what? Then it says he worked six years for the cattle, which is why it's at the end of 20. Okay? So he's worked 20 years, 14 for his two daughters and six years for the cattle. Again, what is it the picture of? 20 years. And so when he leaves and makes this covenant at the end of 20 years, which we know in the end of days is the exact same as the end of the sixth trumpet and the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and renews the covenant that he had made with all when he came at the end of seals. Okay, for those that have been watching for a bit, he's going to renew that covenant for that final year, just like the story of Jacob with his father-in-law, okay? And Jesus is going to fulfill that 14th year. It's like right here, what happens in this final year? Benjamin is born in that final year. And when this is all over, it'll be the 22nd year, which is the same as us saying 15 years, the 14 years of seals and trumpets and the 15th year. But in the bigger picture, what is it? Well, it's the final, it's the seven, 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 seven. It's the seven times seven to 49. This all equals 49, the 49th year, the final year. And then it's the 50th Jubilee year. All of this is in order. All of this has been understood. And look, where else? You guys know this one very famously, right? In 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. What's that about? It's talking about these 14 years and he's telling the story at the end and saying above 14, which is what we're going to talk about a little bit more today. This portion of the escape of the bride time frame that we're in, that's got to happen before the 14 years begin. Okay? Before Jerusalem has to flee. That's a clue to a little bit further on in today's video. Okay? So what else does this equal? 
Well, 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, 22 Hebrew letter alphabet for the alphabet, over and over and over again. And we've shared how it's possible that the debate that goes on in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, they believe there was another earth or another period of time within that. And I believe it's possible with this right here. This first representation is like the first 7,000. Okay? Jesus was so excited to build and so excited to create that they flew by. You get it? And then what? Then you've got Genesis chapter 1 in the first creation with the males and females and everything else. And then what happened? Well, the Lord rested on the seventh day. And then Genesis chapter 2, it talked about the creation of Adam. And what happened since Adam? Well, since Adam, there's what? 6,000 years to the end when Christ will return, feet down on the Mount of Olives. Do you get it? <laughs> over and over, guys. This, this revelation, the massive revelation of the end is revealing the beginning. Just like the Lord said. The be end is revealed in the beginning. The beginning is revealed in the end. It's fantastic. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> you see, how about this? People will say, okay, and the reason I'm going into this is it's also, it's all going to tie together as it always does. But there was a lot of talk uh, lately with people posting things in the forum for those that don't know what I mean by the forum, anybody who's um, who wants to join, you can come here to the website. And when you're there, go to the menu. Every single video, every document we have is on the website. It's all for free. You can join the forum. It's also free. We've got over 800 people in there now. And you just click on the website on the link here or go to ministryrevealed.com. Go to the menu and click forum. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up and that's it. And so... It ends up looking like this, and this is something we're going to talk about in a bit. And um, in the forum, there's been a lot of talk, and there's been some shares, or a fair bit of talk and some shares, about the 6,000 years. And there's always this confusion that happens, and I don't mean the pe between the people in our ministry. I mean some of the videos that they share where there's always this debate within the videos as to how to make this count. And then when they when they want to make it equal something, they skip over something that's very important or they, they just fast forward and you, you don't know this, this whole section of time that they don't talk about because it's got to equal what they want. But I just showed you just something very simple and in a huge overview, what the revelation of Jacob's understanding, what it means to the end, what it equals for the tribulation years, what it means all the way back to creation what it means to the alphabet, what it means to the book of Revelation, okay? And that's just the, the big overview look of it. But in the 6,000 years, there's something that a lot of people tend to forget, or sorry, to tend to not realize, and that is that the count shouldn't be from creation of Adam, although you can deduce it from there when you understand what I'm going to tell you. And that is that man was not corrupted until the fall of Adam. Okay? So when Adam was there for X number of years and Eve was there, everything was fine. There were no issues. So the time of, of what we're looking for in this count, in this 6,000-year count, we're not looking at it directly from the creation of Adam. We're looking at it from the fall of Adam. Now you say, well, that's now impossible. How are we going to find the fall of Adam? Well, it's pretty easy. Because from the fall of Adam, it's not to the birth of Christ. It's to his death and resurrection. So from the fall of Adam to the death and resurrection of Christ is 4,000 years. That's not a mystery. That's nothing difficult to deduce or difficult to understand. 
Okay, now the details of the years to prove out when that timing is gets a little bit more mysterious, but we've shared those here and I'll talk about it in a moment. That's the that's another lower level of the 6,000 or 777. And now we're, we're talking about this final 6, 7,000. We know that Christ is going to be here ruling and reigning till the end of the world, which means till the end of the millennial reign, he's going to be here for a thousand years, that means. Which means there's only 6,000 since the fall of Adam until the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives to then rule the, mil the millennial reign. So then you say, okay, obviously 4,000 years to Christ's death and resurrection. From Christ's death and resurrection, it's got to be now 2,000 years to when he would return feet down on the Mount of Olives. And you say, well, well, how do we deduce that from all of this? Well, we've done it a few different ways, haven't we? We've shown something within Scripture because of what Jesus told us to do in, uh, in Luke to go look at the story of the ark. But this is just a, a very simple one that you cannot understand unless you understand the revelations that have been given here in this ministry. <coughs> but you see how we have yet seven days and then it says after seven days. Not only is this a type and shadow that is after seven days, meaning at the eighth day, it's also a type and shadow of the big picture saying seven years in the end times. Okay. So it's like these first seven years or seven days is like looking at these right here. Okay. But we also know that in the story of Jacob, right, it was the same thing. It was seven years. But in this story, the Lord has already let us know that the bride is taken before, above the 14 years, okay? Like uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So we know it's this portion above. So if we look at it as like a seven years and after seven years, well, what would happen? You should have two more sets of seven. So when we go to Revelation, uh, sorry, Genesis chapter 8, when the 40 days are over and the dove goes out and then is taken back, what happens? There's seven more days and then the dove goes out again and then the dove is sent out one more time and it's seven more days. So in total, how many sevens were there? Three. One, two, three. See that? The story was yet seven days, meaning they hadn't started, and then after seven days, okay? And then it said one more seven and one more seven days as years. Now, let me show this to you. In that big picture, we also have a small picture because remember, with Jacob and working for his father-in-law, it was all done after 20 years. Or you can also say what we would also say is after the 13th year in the picture of the tribulation time, when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and renews that covenant we spoke about. It's the same time frame as what we're looking at here for Jacob's 20 years, and then he makes that covenant with his father-in-law. So here's what we have. You would say, well, wait a second. That was seven, seven, and seven, but... When And when it's over, look at what we see. When it's all over, when the seven, seven, and seven are all over, it says it was the 600th first year, first month, first day of the month. So what would that be a type and shadow? 601 would be like a type and shadow of saying 6,001 in the end time revelation of it. So when the total seven, seven, seven are over, what is it going to be? It won't be the 6,000th year because the 6,000th or 600th was this final year when the Lord came feet down on the Mount of Olives, remember? He comes at 6,000. He doesn't come at 6,001. He comes at the end of 6,000. So what does that mean? That means at the end of the 20 or the end of 13 is when the Lord will return after 6,000 years. And when he fulfills that final year, that will be the 6,000th, and when it's done, it'll be the what? When this is over, 
it'll be the 6,000 in first year. And so 14 years or 21 later, and what do we get? The 6,000 in first year. We shared how this understanding is the big picture revelation of the end, but we've also shown how that the story of Noah and the ark itself and the reason why it's found in Matthew 24, later in Matthew 24, after the Lord has returned, is because the story of it is also another story within a story, which is going to be the 6,000th year to the 6,000th and first year, which is going to be the story of when the Lord comes at the end of the 20 or at the end of the 13 and fulfills the final year as the story of Noah in the ark. That's why it's 600 to the 601st. <laughs> so you see, guys, <laughs> it's so crazy awesome what we've come to understand. I mean, we've got what? Like 360 some odd videos or something like that. I mean, guys, we've been given so, so much. We've understood these things. I'm telling you. It's just, <laughs> you guys want to get fired up? Just go watch some of those intro videos. We've got it. We have understood. And if we've understood and we understand the time frame of Christ, Remember, we're, we're talking about this, this big picture in the 6,000 in this whole time for Christ. How can we prove? Right? How can we prove this count? Okay, it's 4,000 years to, to his death and resurrection. And then it's 2,000 more years. Well, we've got another way that helped us, or not another way, but we've got another piece of scripture that helped us with this recently as well. And that was Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar was 28 AD. And so 28 AD, and you say, well, how do you know it? Well, we were shared in the forum this terrific video about the Shroud of Turin. And we did a video on it recently. It's a mind-blowing video that connects directly to our ministry. Okay, and we shared it. And it's all connected to the what? The head of the bull, Taurus. That's why the Lord led us to Taurus here in this ministry to understand this count that I'm going to share something awesome that Todd found. And we're going to build on that as well to show you that revelation. But you see, when, when you see what I'm going to share with you that Todd found and go into the depths of it, you're going to see that getting to that count without having the revelation that the Lord gave us for Taurus to begin the count this year in Taurus, we would have never understood it. How could it be? Because you guys are going to see this, this, this topic that we're going to get into about, about this time frame we're in. In the four years I've been doing this, almost four years, and in, the, and in the years before as we were all just watching and people just watching other people and, and looking for the day, I have never seen it. I don't know of anybody in the forum that said they saw it before. Todd had never seen it before. He said he found it just the hour within that hour that he posted it. But you're going to understand that there's no way it could have been understood unless we were led to the understanding of Taurus. Because what we were shared here in this, in this video of the Shroud of Turin was fascinating. One of the things was something I had never known, but was common knowledge. And you would think that if it's common knowledge, that everybody that, that, that follows the end time or end 2028 and believe that's when Christ returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, you would think that they would have heard about this. Because the coin, the coin that was found on Jesus's eyes that they could read on the Shroud of Turin was the 29th year, 29 AD, in the 16th year of Tiberius Caesar, when he made a special coin. I think it was to his wife or something like that. It was the only year that he made that coin. And it was 29 AD 
in the 16th year of Tiberius Caesar. Well, if this is the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, then one year earlier is 2028. And in 2028 is the year that it says Christ began to be about 30 years of age. That means he began, he had just turned, sorry, 30 years old. So in 28 AD, he turns 30. So 29 AD, I'm sorry, sorry, so 28 AD could not have been his death and resurrection to when he's going to return in 28 AD in 2028. You follow? This was this was a perfect connection and revelation. Because in this <clears throat> and in the rest of this video, what was revealed was our connection to Taurus that we've been following and understanding and digging deeper into for the past 15 or so months. It's the head, Aleph, Ox, head. The one eye is Ayin, 70. The other eye is Bullseye, 50. Noon. And that's literally what the pendant was on that Christ was wearing in the Shroud of Turin. With the technology, they were able to read these things that were imprinted on the Shroud. This is 70, 1 for Ox, Aleph, and 50, Noon. This is the revelation. This is what we've been looking for. This is the revelation of the end and the reason he was leading us to Taurus, to Aleph, to the beginning, to the head of the year. It was amazing. Okay? It was amazing. And then, to understand this more, we say, okay, we've got Christ. It was, it was uh, 28 AD when he began to be 30 years old. Then people would say, okay, well, then his ministry was only three and a half years. Well, we've proven that it wasn't. We've gone down the whole road of John, right? That even scripture, I think John chapter two or John chapter three, he says, I must diminish and he must, I must decrease while Christ increases. And John was still around for a couple of months preaching and doing these things and baptizing people at the same time Christ was with his disciples. At the same time, we read about it there in John. And then John is taken to prison. John is in prison for about 10 months. By the time he's killed and it's all over and people stop going to John as well as Christ, it's one year that will have passed. So even though Christ began to be 30 in 28 AD and he was gathering people to him and people were being drawn to him and everything else, he did not officially begin his ministry until the following year when he began to be 31 years old, when John will have been killed at that time, when he was beheaded. And the revelation of the end is what helped us reveal this. It's the difference from when the six seals are over, this, at the end of six, the Lord is seen coming and they say, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. He's here for this final year. The 144,000 get sealed. The rapture of the great multitude of the sleeping church, Mark's group, then gets raptured. And then you have the seventh seal. And it says it's about half an hour. I believe because chapter seven of Revelation is about seven months and the seventh seal is a period of time of about five months. And so when it's all over, then it's the beginning of trumpets. So it's this final year. It's like here's Christ showing up just like he did in 28 AD, received baptism, got the Holy Ghost. You following? It's, it's like a type and shadow of chapter seven of Revelation, but it's also Luke chapter 3, from the revelation of Luke knowing all things in order, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. So it revealed that Christ was here for one year, getting things set up, preparing, gathering people unto him, but it wasn't until that year was done that he then began his three and a half year ministry, just like it will be in the end of days. So now when you count that out, Christ 
was 34 and a half years old at his death in resurrection in 33 AD at Passover time. And so if you go 2,000 years later, well, you have to go, it says after two days. Okay, And people say, well, what do you mean two days? What is this whole two days all about? Well, Hosea tells us about it, right? In Hosea chapter 6. It's right here. The Lord will return to us. He has torn us. He has smitten us. He will bind us up. Why? Because they were there. It's a type and shadow of them having endured seals. Hosea's 14 chapters. Zechariah's 14 chapters. You're going to see as we get into this a little bit deeper that Zechariah, we know, is written to the Jews. Not Israel, Judah, okay? Whereas Hosea is written to Gentiles slash Israel. Remember, they were grafted in. And look at what it says. After enduring that tribulation, you could say of the six years of seals, what's happening? After two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, meaning after 2,000 years, he will revive us. And in the third day, which is the 3,000 years, which is the end of the millennial reign, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. You see, in, in the story of Genesis, the seven days, seven days, they were types and shadows of years. The two days and the three days, they're types and shadows of thousands of years. You see, and this isn't a mystery for us. We all know this, right? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. All right? But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Those are pretty stern words, aren't they? Don't be ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. That's why two days is as a thousand, is as two thousand years, and three days is as 3,000 years in what they're talking about there. You see, that's why in creation, when we, when we were looking at this as the type and shadow in creation, okay, we're looking at this as that possible verse 1 to verse 2 in Genesis, the first creation. And then all of chapter 1, the six days, well, we're told the six days were six days to the Lord. Well, exactly. They were six days to the Lord. And people will say, well, it was a night and then it was a day. It was literal six days. Well, listen, according to scripture, he just said one day with him. One day, an evening and a day, one 24-hour period. See, one 24-hour period is as with the Lord and to us would be a thousand years. So that's why we're saying if we, if humans, if we were there, to witness the six days and the seventh day of rest, it would have been 6,000 years and 7,000 to us. Okay? That's what it would have appeared to be as humans in the, in, the, in the realm of time. So you see, oh man, it's just so awesome. Now, people say, well, well, what if there was a miscalculation? If it wasn't counted properly from here to there? Well, first of all, like I just said, there's historical evidence. We have this coin, correct? This coin is very well known. It's not a mystery. It's been around for a long time. But we've got even more evidence that we were able to put together and show here in this ministry. And that revelation was about the Sabbath years of rest. Okay, what the Shemitah years, what the Lord calls the Shemitah years, the years of rest. We took the year that Christ was born he was born in the fall, in the fall feasts of 3 BC. And these represent the time of the spring feast. Okay, this would be Nisan, and you could say this would be Tishri. So Christ is born, and so by the spring of 2 BC, Christ is six months old. Okay? So when, when, did it, when was he born? In a new cycle. At the beginning of a cycle, after a Shemitah year of rest. Then Christ is born. And we follow these Shemitah cycles. And there's reason you're going to see. We follow these Shemitah cycles. And look at what happens. The Shemitah year of rest. And then what? Boom! Then Christ is crucified in the, in the new year. 
at the, again, not in the Sabbath year of rest for the land, but the following year for his birth and then for his crucifixion as well, his death and resurrection. And we followed these Shemitah, these Sabbath years, all the way back to where we are now. Okay? All the way to where we are now. And it revealed to us what we're really been trying to understand, which was the 70 years of Israel. <clears throat> and when we did this, we saw that there was this three year that we couldn't account for before the next cycle could begin. And what we were trying to understand is, okay, there's 1948 when they became a nation, and then 49, 50. So at some point in 51 is when the new cycle began again. And at first we didn't know what it was. And then we had the revelation, right? You guys know that revelation of Leviticus chapter one, uh, chapter 19, that the Lord said, when you come into the land for the first three years, it's uncircumcised. And then recently, we also came across that revelation of, of the counting of the kings, that the house of Israel counted from the spring feasts and the house of Judah counted from the fall feasts. So one counted from Nisan and the house of Judah counted from Tishri. That's where they began their year. So one of the things, and this is going to help you guys solidify that we really are here. And that is that from the house of Israel, this is May 14th, all right? May 14th, 1948, they became a nation. That means it's not until <clears throat> May 14th or Nisan of 1949. So what is that, like uh, 10 months or so later? Well, if it was the house of Israel, the house of Israel would have said those 10 months count as a year. And so in the in Nisan, Nisan 2, okay, with the beginning of Nisan would have begun their second year. And they'd fulfill their second year to Nisan of 1950. And they would have fulfilled their third year to Nisan 1951, three years fulfilled, and then begins the 70 years. Whereas the house, now, if that was the case, then at Nisan this year, the tribulation must have already begun. But it didn't. The 14 years haven't yet started. No pre-trib escape of the bride. And all three of them have been proven true pre, mid, and post. So it could not have been in correlation to the house of Israel, which makes complete sense. Because when Christ came the first time, it was for the house of Israel. That's why the Gentiles are included. That's why he fulfilled the spring feasts. But this time, he's coming to fulfill the fall feasts. And he's been leading us for the last 15 months to the revelation of the ox. So that we can come to understand the count that will bring us into the fall feasts. And so when you take 1948, May 14th. The house of Judah would have said from May until Tishri, those few months, those are just a session. They're a, a session months. They're, they're not counted yet as a year. Whereas the house of Israel would have counted them as a year and then begun the second, like I told you earlier. So Judah would have said, we begin this count from Tishri 1948. Okay, because it came in the spring. So in Tishri 1948, they began their count. So to 1949, one year complete. 49 to 50, two years complete. 50 to 51. So the Feast of Trumpets time frame or Tishri 1951, three years are complete and the next year began. We've understood this thing. Okay? And look at where the 70 years will then begin to take us to where we are now. In the new cycle. You see, all the way back in Leviticus chapter 19, the Lord already had it preset that when they come back into the land for three years, they can't take anything because it's uncircumcised. It needed to begin at the new cycle. Now, we thought at first that this new cycle was in Nisan. But then because of these kings, the, the house of Israel compared to the house of Judah, we now had the revelation. We can understand why the Lord was leading us in the revelation of Taurus. 
because he was leading us to the house of Judah's time. This time, it's the bull's time. This time, it's for the house of Judah. You're going to see as, as I show you some of these things. Let me show you this real quick. The house of Judah. Where is it? Here it is. The book of Zechariah. Okay. We were showing the book of Zechariah. And why was the book of Zechariah important? Because the 14 chapters, we've been telling you that the book of Zechariah and the 14 chapters is to the Jews. And it's the 14 years. And that's why it says these 70 years, meaning we must still be in the 70th year because it hasn't happened yet. And in the 70th year is when this destruction comes upon them and they're all scattered. Okay, towards the end of it, you could say. So let's have a look at Zechariah. So I said to myself, man, I said, Lord, did I did I misunderstand the count? And I thought, no, I couldn't, man, because because you go to um, uh, 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 Psalms 90 and 10. And what do we know about Psalms 90 and 10? It's the 14 years, but it begins the count from when 70 to 80. That means when 70 is fulfilled, just like the pendant, then you start counting one, two, three, four, five, and you count your 365. That's the beginning of the 14 years. And again, we know the 14 years is true. Here's another one, right? You guys remember this? In 1 Kings chapter 6, in the fourth year, the foundation is laid. It took seven years to finish building. And when it was done from the fourth to the 11th were the seven years that it took. That's from mid seals when the foundation is laid and to mid trumpets when it'll finally be finished, which will be the 11th year. In the 11th year, it'll be 10 and a half years. Messiah's cut off, remember? I mean, it's all, it's over. We, we, we've understood these things. So with Zechariah, <clears throat> I said, man, is it is it maybe that really it's supposed to be the house of Israel? And I'm like, Lord, if it's the house of Israel, I said, uh, that means we would have to go to like next spring. And I'm like, that's just, that's not jiving. You fulfilled the spring feasts. The, the count is already confirmed to equal to this time. We know that the trumpet is going to be blasted. For for the bride to go get the bride at the end of the 14 years, right? For for the Rachel type, not the Gentile. And we know that it means Feast of Trumpets. You know, the day and hour, no one knows. In Mark and in Matthew, it's both Feast of Trumpets when you're coming after six years. And after six years, we've understood it. So I said, I got to look up the book of Zechariah and confirm who it's written to and check it out. Book of Zechariah and the prophecies of Zechariah and so forth. And here it is. During the exile, many Judites and Benjamites were taken unto Babylon. Did it say Israelites? Nope. Okay, they were another group, right? Judah was written to, uh, sorry, Zechariah is written to the house of Judah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's what we were looking to understand. Because it's the house of Judah. That's giving us the understanding of these 70 years. So if it was the house of Judah and not the house of Israel, because now we're going to fulfill the fall feast, or the Lord has to fulfill the fall feasts, that would explain why the tribulation hasn't begun yet back in Nisan. Because it's to the house of Judah. So now we're following these Sabbath years. And we're saying, okay, we got to connect this, man. If, if people can't believe the, the big picture, 21, 22,000 years, if they're not sure about the, the 6,000, and it's from the fall of Adam to the death and resurrection, which is 4,000, and then another two days or 2,000 years to Christ, to his return feet down, and then that final year, well, then let's break it down to the most straightforward common denominator, which is the 70th year. You see, pastors, we've said this before, pastors don't talk about it anymore because they think it's past. And in a sense, yes, it's past, but no, because they didn't understand three years had to be added before the 70 began. So now you count this 
and we follow this 70 and guess what? Here it is. And where is it? The seventh year. This is the seventh year. Well, if that's the seventh year, isn't it fitting that the revelation we were given before, long time before this chart was figured out, we understood that it was the 777 of the end? Which means if the seven easy are the ones to take away Leah or the bride, then we should be in the seventh for the time of the escape. You see? We are. See, it says 2020 because it goes from fall of 2020. We used to think spring of 2020 because we thought with the house of Israel back then, we didn't know the difference. Now we know the difference between the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And this time it's for Judah. So it's from the fall of 2020 to the fall of 2021. So when you see 2021 here, this here is from the fall of 2021. Okay? From the fall of 2020 to the fall of 2021 is the seventh year that we're in. Okay? That is the seventh year that we're in. Well, that's exactly what it had to equal. Because what was remaining was seven and seven and the final year jubilee. Do you see that? Do you see that? It's the exact same thing as our chart. The exact same thing revealed in the year count where it had to equal at the end of the sixth year of trumpets at the end of the 6,000 years to Christ's return, feet down on the Mount of Olives, it had to be the end of the 20th in the big picture, the end of the 13th in the tribulation picture to equal after 2,000 years when Christ would return, feet down on the Mount of Olives, would then fulfill that final year. And when it was all over, the tribes all received their land and the millennial reign begins. Did you see that? You see, there, there's no skipping of years. There's no made up make believe stuff here. This is all revealed from Christ, from his birth to his death and resurrection to the 70 year count where if people say well I'm just not sure if 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 that's the proper 2000 year count from Christ's uh birth to his death and resurrection well look at this remember we said it was he he began to turn 30 in 28 AD because it was the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar well look at this this is the spring this here represents in down here it represents the spring okay Nisan of 28 AD when Jesus is 29 and a half years old. By the fall of 28 AD, Jesus turned 30 years old. Hello. Told you. Told you. We're able to prove that Christ wasn't 33 and a half years old when he was crucified and, and resurrected. He was 34 and a half, not 33 and a half. But it was 33 AD because there was that one year with John the Baptist. See, when did it happen? Beginning of a new cycle. When did his birth? Beginning of a new cycle. We follow it all the way up to the 70. When does it start? The 70 year count? Beginning of a new cycle. We come to the end and we're looking for the last two sets of seven, which we already understood the last three. And it had to be what? When the tribulation begins, it's got to be what? At the beginning of a new cycle. <laughs> Guys. Ah, we're here, we're here, we're here. Don't fret, don't panic. It's true, and believe me, I know the feeling in the pit of your stomach. I know so many of your thoughts as they are my thoughts too. All right? <laughs> so hold tight, hold tight and understand we've understood. Okay? We're going to get into some fun stuff here. 
we're going to keep delving into this. And, and as we do, I want to give you guys a little reminder here. Because some people, when, when they see something, they say, oh, that's pagan. Oh, don't do this. That's pagan. You have to understand. When people say this, what do they say? It's corrupted. Right? They say it's corrupted. Well, do you know for something to be corrupted, it had to already be something? You follow? For something to have been corrupted, that means it already had to be something for it to get corrupted. Something had to already be to be corrupted. Okay? And I'm sharing you that so your thoughts don't instantly say, oh, that's not it. That, that's all pagan. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably actually even thousands of years. So yes, there are pagan things to it. Yes, there's twists and things that they've done to it. But you're going to see something because when I was sharing this and talking about this in, in the forum, actually, when, uh, when, when Todd shared this in the forum and the conversation began, it happened after I posted about this. And it was to, to give all of our brothers and sisters a reminder. We've, we've shared this in this ministry many times. I think, I think I've even got videos going back three years. And the title of the video is, We Are, we, uh, we, sorry, we are Spring Wheat. And I did another one, I think, even recently, several months ago. We are spring wheat. But here's the issue. If we're spring wheat, why were we looking for spring events? How can, how can the, the proper feast of weeks count for the first fruits? This is deep, guys. How can the true count of the first fruits of the Feast of Weeks be in late spring? How is it possible? Because it's not actually planted until spring. And it's not a modern thing. It's been around forever. There's winter wheat and there's spring wheat. Those are the two main ones. You see... I'm going to have to close this. It's doing all sorts of, uh, taking a lot of power to do it. But I wanted to show you guys first, and then we'll remember it, okay? Winter wheat is typically planted between October and December, and it's harvested. It grows over winter, and it's harvested spring to early summer, okay? We are not winter wheat. The bride of Christ is spring wheat. The bride of Christ does not take seven to eight months to harvest, to, to grow, to be ready, okay? We are not winter wheat. We're not looking for this spring event. The bride of Christ is spring wheat. And I've mentioned it and showed videos on it so often. It says, um, spring wheat, shoots, clumps, lovely, uh, clumps among late spring and early summer flowers. Spring wheat is planted between March and May and should be harvested or simply dug up between July and September. This is why I shared it a couple days ago in the forum, just to, to give people encouragement. Where are we right now as I'm speaking to you? The last day of July. So I went through that other process and the, the other progression of the big picture and whittling it all down from, from the big thousands of years to the 2000s to the, to the 70. Do you understand why the 70th is so important? Because if that 70th year isn't fully understood, if it didn't line up exactly with the, with the, the 2000 years of Christ, then it wouldn't have made sense. It, there, there, there's something would have been missing. But it's in perfect alignment with it. And it was I was bringing all that together and, and energizing you guys with the confirmation, with the revelation, with the understanding that we have absolutely understood the year. Now we're coming into the nitty gritty, as I was saying. Now we're coming into some of the finer details that will take place between this time right here. And this is why I posted it in the forum a couple days ago, 
to em, to to empower, to strengthen, to lift up and renew some of the spirits to know. Let's take deep breaths because we know we're here. Okay? So it's July to September and it says that means a considerably shorter maturity time than winter wheat around 4 months. Okay? So spring wheat takes about four months to be ready to harvest. Yet we were looking to the first fruits of the wheat harvest in late spring, early summer. Do you understand how that was messed up? Do you understand? So let's go back. If we look at Leviticus chapter 23, We have to understand something. Christ was the feast of first fruits. You get it? That's not a mystery. We've talked about that many times. The feast of first fruits, which is the harvest, if you will, the the harvest of, let me show you. I have a really rough sketch I did a long time ago. Okay. In the big picture, just like we did the big picture of thousands of years, I'm going to show you the big picture of the harvests. God is right here. God the Father. Christ was the representation of the first fruits of barley. He was he was the representation of the first fruits and he represented the barley harvest. The church Israel is the wheat. And the bride of Christ is in that wheat, okay? And then you've got Judah. So you have Christ who was the barley. You've got Israel slash the Gentiles grafted in who are wheat. And then you've got Judah, the Jews, who are the grapes, the fruit. They all have a first fruit. And this is the picture of the first one, which is Christ. He was part, he was the the, the representation in the barley harvest. He was the first fruits of the barley. And who were the ones that were the, the, the main harvest? The ones that slept. Corners and gleanings, I'm not sure how that plays out with corners and gleanings. It's to the poor and so forth. How it exactly plays out, I don't know. Okay? These are the two main ones that we always talk about. So the first fruits was Christ. Yes, here it is right here. 7225 in the Hebrew. The beginning, the first. We shared how we can prove that it's Christ because the very first word in the Bible, beginning, is Christ. In Christ, God created. Okay? In Christ, God created. That's what it says. Because Christ is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, or sorry, is the first fruits, and he was that representation of the first fruits for all of us. Hence, the first fruits of all of us. But he was also, in his barley, he was a first fruits, and then there were those that rose with him. Okay? What about the middle one, the main har- the, the, the main or what's the wheat harvest? Well, for the wheat harvest, it also is harvested the same. So here's an example. Here's a barley, here's a barley field, here's a wheat field. You can say this is like the bushes and branches of a tree, and maybe the stem, the, the trunk is down here. Okay. It's all represented. They all have the same layout. There is a first fruit. There is a main harvest, and then there's the corners left behind and whatever drops to the ground as the corners and gleaning. But every harvest has those main features to it. So as Christ was, now there's another first fruits coming. This is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is the bride of Christ. This wheat harvest is the one we've shared many times when we come down now to the Feast of Weeks. And at the Feast of Weeks, we see it right here that this first fruits of the Feast of Weeks is the first fruits being what? 1061. It's not the same first fruits, is it? That's because this first fruits, listen to this. The one up here is the first fruits, which is Christ, which has no leaven. Okay? There is no leaven in it. When you come down here, what do we see? We see that there are loaves of bread, right? Two wave loaves 
with leaven. Of course it's with leaven, right? We, mankind, we have sin. So the first fruits, 1061, of the wheat harvest is the bride of Christ. The main harvest is going to be that rapture of the church in that seventh year of seals. Then it's the grape harvest. Then it's the 144,000 who are sealed right before the rapture of the main church. And when it's over, ignore these years. You see, I have it, I did this a long time ago. We understood this a long time ago, brothers and sisters. See, this was back in 2018 that I put this together. Why? Well, because we thought it was the 70th back then. You see, the whole world thought it was the true 70th. We know better now, so don't worry about that. We know where we are. Just look at the models, okay? And so when you get to the grape harvest, you have your 144,000 sealed right before the rapture happens, right? And then what are you going to have? Now we know it's not Israelites that should be there anymore, but Judah. Then it's when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, and it's the end of the grape harvest for Judah. Okay, so the bride of Christ is the first fruits of the wheat harvest of the Feast of Weeks. Okay, and we know that it relates to spring wheat. It's four months, like Christ said, and its time is from July to September. So you say, well, hold on a second. <laughs> it never made any sense to be looking all the way back in the spring or early summer when spring wheat isn't planted till about that time. You see, till early, uh, early spring, early mid-spring. It had to have its time to, to flourish, right? To, to, to grow. So when we do this count and we look at this count like we would see in Scripture and we would say, that, okay, from here we begin the count, and what do, what do the Jews tell us? What, what does the church tell us? Oh, it's the 6th of Sivan, okay? This is the Feast of Weeks. Well, that's, that's not possible. You see how they're counting it? They're counting it from maybe winter wheat. Spring wheat doesn't start at that time. Spring wheat isn't planted until from here to hear. This is not four months later. So you see, you're, you're, you're starting to grasp here why the Lord had to reveal to us an understanding for the past while about getting us to understand the bull. You see, it was for more than one reason. This is one of them, but we've shared some of the other reasons as well which is this video right here, which I we don't like to talk about too much. But if you want to understand it, make sure you watch the playlist before you go and watch that. Okay? So everything this time had to relate to us counting from the bull. And when we count from the bull, when the Lord had led us to Taurus, that brought us to right in here. So it doesn't mean that we're saying this is Nissan. We're saying we're counting it as the time of where we would begin the count like you would like they would in Nisan where we're counting the true understanding the true revelation of the feast of weeks because this is where the lord had led us in that understanding now what had happened and the way i looked at it is i was considering it like we said here's right it's the it's the 8th 15th 22nd 29th of every month so this was the type and shadow of the Passover time because now we're counting from the Taurus, right? From Taurus. So this was the time of the moon for Taurus as, as a representation of the um, uh, uh, resurrection time or death and resurrection. And so I started counting on the 22nd, then the 29th. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this was how we got to 717 which I was, of course, very excited because how many people have had revelations of 717? So, of course, we were excited by it. And then 
these things weren't happening. Nothing happened. And we thought, well, okay, after seven days was the revelation, right? Because when we go to the book of Genesis, we saw that it was also a type and shadow. Remember, we saw in Genesis, in the story of the ark, that we know that yet seven days and after seven days was a type and shadow in the big picture of years, but also that this after seven days was also a representation of an actual day count when the seven days finished counting, meaning at about an eight days, then the 40 days would begin, just like what the story is right here in Scripture, because we know that there's a 40 days of the Son of Man that's coming. The bride will be taken, and the 40 days of the Son of Man will come, just like I shared you with that video in the intro series, The 40 Days of the Son of Man. So when we got to this date, we said, okay, after seven, if it's not at the beginning of 50 days, okay, the 50 days began here. If it's not after seven days, then wait a second, what are we missing? Well, I started thinking again, as I'm going to share this, this festival that's coming up with you, I said, well, you know what? There's another way to consider this count as well. I began the count as this first Sabbath to be counted as the first one. Well, our brother Ivan has been telling us for a long time, he would say, no, it's not the very first Sabbath that you begin to count because what we've been told is we've been told that the first fruits comes right away, right? The Feast of First Fruits. And Ivan says, no, the count shouldn't be right away. It should begin the following Sabbath, okay? So the morrow after the following Sabbath. So when you start counting from here, okay? So I would have said, I was saying from here, and we'd say, okay, one Sabbath, two Sabbaths, where Ivan, and not only Ivan, but same with the Essenes. They would tell you it's not the 8th or the 6th or the 8th of Savan. They would tell you it was the 15th of Savan, which was the Sabbath, Okay? So this would be that same type and shadow of Sabbath time. Don't worry about what it says of Savan. Remember, I just told you we're counting from Taurus. So then the count would start here, and this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So in, in Ivan, or the way the Essenes had had it, the month of Av we know is now represented as Savan, in how the Lord was bringing us to understand um, uh, 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 from Taurus, okay, from when the sun is in Taurus, it's just one week difference in the count. So if we say one week difference, and here we are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and as I'm speaking to you right now, we're in this seventh day. In Jerusalem, you'd say the evening has already started, but it's not daytime yet. Early in the morning won't happen until just about nine o'clock my time PM. So in you know what's that a little about six hours from now is early in the morning on what the first day of the week. Okay, this is the Sabbath. So if this is the seventh Sabbath and it's the morrow after, is this what we're looking for? Okay, there was your count to the seven and then your seven days and after seven, which would bring us to here. Okay, on my side of the world, it'd be the evening of the 31st, but the evening of the 31st into August 1st. Now, this doesn't only correlate. It is, it is true. It is correlating directly with the count because that's always been something that's debated. Should the first fruits um, be represented on in the middle of unleavened bread, or should it be the uh, the Sabbath after? Okay, so that's something that's always been debated, even among scholars still today. And so, if we take that second approach, and we end up to here with with the count, I'll say Ivan's count with the way he's placed it in his calendar, then August first would be the after seven days, and when the forty days would begin, which means to tonight into tomorrow could be the escape, 
Okay, so this is part one of the escape that I'm going to share with you, but I'm going to share one more piece and I'm going to go into detail with this first. And then I'm going to also share another potential. And there's another reason I'm going to share that for you as well. Remember, we're going into nitty gritty detail because we know this is the year. And so that would make it on August 1st. Well, when we go to Luke chapter 24, you guys all remember this. We know that there's a reason why only Luke's in the Synoptic Gospels says the body of the Lord Jesus wasn't found, right? This is because the bride of Christ will be gone and you have perplexed, okay? The world is going to be perplexed when this happens. Chaos will ensue, hence the 40 days beginning. This is what? Well, it was on the first day of the week, very early in the morning. So maybe some of you guys watching this won't even be able to watch the whole thing. <laughs> I, I'm I'm much more I'm much more uh, uh, leaning to this one coming this this evening tomorrow uh, than what I'm going to show you uh, one more week out. You got to remember when when even when I talk about this one more week out, we we don't need to get depressed by these things anymore. We don't have to be so so sad. And I know there's suffering. I know there's even some of our brothers and sisters that that some of our elderly ones that are just in, in so much pain and we pray for you. You're in our prayers every day. I'm, I'm concerned with one because I haven't heard back from them for a while. I pray everything's okay. And, um, and you know, I understand and, and people with their jobs and so forth, right? I get it. I get it. But we know we're here. So that's what we can always take comfort in. And that's why I wanted to start the video with that because we can take comfort in knowing that we know we are here. It's simply the precision of the day that remains. Okay. And so now that we're here, now that we're, sorry, now that we're right here and we may be hours away from the escape, what, what can we, what else can we show besides that additional count to show that this could be the time at August 1st? Okay, what what is it that we can show? Because let me show you guys something. This is what I was getting at a moment ago. Isn't it strange that this would be the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest? Doesn't that strike you strange knowing what you know now? If we are spring wheat and we 100% are, the bride of Christ is the first fruits of the spring wheat. Isn't it strange that we've always considered this to be the time of Pentecost? Now we know the correct count, right? We know it's seven weeks and then number 50 days. We've understood that part. But it would appear that where to count it and why the Lord led us to Taurus was because he was showing us we're spring wheat. The Lord revealing to us Taurus, besides the fact of what it means for, for the bull in the time of Judah, he was also leading us to Taurus so that we could understand the count for the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is spring wheat and the first fruits of that wheat. You want to see what's going to blow your mind? Our brother Todd. He's not really a new member. He just took a break from social media for a bit and came back. And within, I think it was, this is two days later, one hour, like within the hour, he just found it. And this was on the 29th, a couple days ago. He said, did anybody ever hear of this before? I had never heard of it. There's a whole bunch of conversation going back and forth about it. None of us had heard of it before. And we've been doing this for a long time. How many of you guys have ever heard of uh, low mass day, right? It's like loaf mass. I called it Lamaz. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second, it's not Lamaz. Although Lamaz is kind of fitting, right? Birth, remember? But it's loaf mass. Loaf mass. And I said, what the heck? Just like he did, what? He had never seen it before and he just came across it. And everybody, you know, that's why I'm preparing you guys. Everybody's going to say, oh, pagan, pagan. Don't worry about this whole pagan thing. Oh, by the way, the Shroud of Turin. Turin means little bull. Ha ha. How appropriate is that? Because why? The little bull, Al of Christ, is in the middle. It's all about the head, remember? How awesome was that? 
Okay. So when I went to click on this, I started to look into this Lomas. Okay. Check this out. Lomas Day, or also known as Loaf Mass Day, is a Christian holiday celebrated in some English speaking countries in the Northern Hemisphere on August 1st. Do you see the build up? Do you see the, the, the understanding and why the build up to August 1st? And in a biblical count, right? There's debates between the 6th, 8th, or the 15th. But there are ancient texts that show 15th, the, the additional week. Okay? So now here we are, and there's Loaf Mass Day, and it's observed on August 1st. The name originates from the word loaf in reference to bread and mass, in reference to the primary Christian uh, liturgy celebrating Holy Communion. It is a festival in the liturgical calendar to mark, here it comes, to mark the blessing of the first fruits harvest with a loaf of bread brought to the church for this purpose. Hello. Hello. This is why he was freaking out. We started freaking out. It's on August 1st and it's Loaf Miss Day and it's to celebrate first fruits what on earth is the first fruits of the harvest of wheat doing on august 1st there's only one reason brothers and sisters there is only one connection it's spring wheat hello it is spring wheat brothers and sisters it says on Loaf Mass Day, it is customary to bring to Christian church a loaf made with uh, from the new crop, which began to be harvested at Lomastide, which falls halfway between summer solstice and September equinox. Christians have church processions to bakeries where those working within are blessed by Christian clergy and so on and so forth. What are they bringing? Loaves of bread? The observance is bring a loaf of bread made from new wheat crop to church for a blessing, making loaves from the grain collected at harvest. Do you know this? what, what this is revealing here? It's revealing that what this count is that the Jews were doing and that the church adopted thinking they were understanding it, I believe had to do with the winter wheat. That's why it's always been so confusing. How, how often has this been understood? Almost never, or at least none of the churches ever, ever, ever have spoken about this. You see, there was something else going on because there was no way the bride of Christ who is spring wheat could be getting harvested in in April, May. It was impossible. It's because it wasn't till midsummer when the harvest of spring wheat begins. It's called the first fruits harvest of the spring wheat. Are you hearing me? <laughs> I think I'm being loud enough. I'm sure you're hearing me. D does it ring a bell for you guys? Does it ring a bell to, to Exodus chapter 34? In Exodus chapter 34, And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. So the first fruits of the wheat harvest is already brought in but like we said in the last video, the wedding is going to be observed at the year's end. This is when they observe the first fruits of the feast uh, of the wheat of the of the wheat harvest. And that was exactly what Exodus 34:22 that we've been teaching for so long is all about 
the feast of weeks of the first fruits. See, that's us. This is the bride of Christ. First fruits of wheat harvest. And then what do we see that comes next? Right? When we share this, what do we see? Moses. What happens with Moses? 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, we're going to get into more detail of that. Don't you worry. Sip of coffee. Nice and warm out. Even in the the inner sanctuary of my garage, (laughs) my coffee is still nice and lukewarm. So then what happens? Oh, what did I do with it? I thought I had something else highlighted here. Protestant denomination, the loaf blessed by the saints. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. In many parts of England, tenants were bound to present freshly harvested wheat to the landlords on or before the day of August. Okay. In the Anglo Saxon Chronicle, where it is referred to frequently, it is called the Feast of First Fruits. Hello. <laughs> Oh, this is so exciting. The blessings of first fruits was performed annually by both Eastern Christian and Western Christian churches on the 1st of August or the 6th. The latter, here it comes, the latter being the feast of the transfiguration of Christ. What? (laughs) Okay. Now, you're starting to grasp why I was I was starting with some of the things and building in and, and reminding you of some of those things that we've understood already. Does this ring a bell to anybody? Of course it rings a bell to some of you, right? It should ring a bell to all of you. I was just talking about it. Do you remember in the... In the in the uh, 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 um, fe- the Mount Transfiguration, this story that we've been revealing here in this ministry of the story of the Transfiguration, do you see what they've done? <laughs> I'm, it's so awesome. Okay, the whole world of church has been taught from who, brothers and sisters? You got it. Matthew, 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 Matthew. All right. We all know they've been taught from the gospel of Matthew. So what do they say? They say it either from the uh, uh, from the 1st of August or the 6th of August. Why? Because they're considering it as the after six days from the transfiguration story in Matthew. But if you guys remember what I taught you, what part of the revelation was, Remember this in the playlist? In the playlist, this video right here, uh, 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 this one right here, when I told you pre-tribulation is true, it's Luke's group. Mid-tribulation rapture in the seventh year is Mark's group in the church, that the sleeping church that will wake up the great multitude after the the greatest revival in human history is the mid, and then the post is when the Lord returns feet down at the end of Matthew's portion. What do you think this equals? You see how part of the story of the revelation of it is the story of the transfiguration? So this pre, mid, and post story is revealed just in using the triumphal entry, the resurrection story, and the story of the Mount of Transfiguration. All of them giving us types and shadows of pre, mid, and post, the three times the Lord comes. One is the escape in the 40 days of the Son of Man. The next, when he comes at the end of seals, when you see him after six years, right? When do you see him? You see him coming at the end of the sixth seal. Okay, that is after six years, which is Mark's group. Do you remember Mark's transfiguration story says the same thing as Luke, uh, as Matthew's? Right? It says, oops, Mark. It says after six days. The reason Mark says after six days is because it's the after six years of seals. Do you know why Matthew says after six days? Because Matthew's is after the six years of trumpets. The Lord comes at the end of the sixth seal on heavenly Mount Zion where everybody's freaking out. Not the whole world will see him. 
those that were those who are his. I don't know if it's going to be hovering above the earth over Jerusalem. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but people are going to be freaking out and telling the mountains to fall on them. It's going to be wild. And then he's establishing things in that final year, like I shared earlier. And then when trumpets begins, Jerusalem, the, the peace agreement, the deal, the, the, the deal that Christ, the covenant, not peace deal, the covenant that Christ will have made with all will begin. And Jerusalem will be getting rebuilt. Okay? He will have had the Gog Magog war at the end of that six years of seals. Then they're going to just they're going to burn their weapons and everything for the next seven years. And what's going to happen? The first three and a half is of trumpets is the rebuilding of the city and the streets. Then Messiah is cut off, like we were saying. When Messiah is cut off, that red heifer bull, Satan is going to be here for two and a half years. And then the Lord will return when? After six years. He will return at the end of the six years of trumpets. And will what? Renew that covenant that he had made with all. And then deal with everyone in that final year while he's here. Just like we saw the story of the ark. Do you see how it all connects? Just like we bring it back to Matthew 24 and the story of the ark, which is the one year representation of that final 13th to 14th year. Or that 20th into 21st year after he's returned. It's awesome. Okay. But now here's the thing. They just said that they do it either from the 1st of August to the 6th of August as a representation of the transfiguration story. Yet their understanding of the transfiguration story is from Matthew. We know the truth is Luke comes first. And what is the transfiguration story of Luke? Are you ready for this? This is going to pump you up for tonight, I'll tell you that. Because here's the transfiguration story of Luke. And Luke comes first. And it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings. Do you know why Luke says about in eight days? Why Christ is saying that here in Luke where Mark is after six and Matthew is after six? You see? Because it's after six, boom, there's, they see the Lord coming at the end of the sixth seal. Why does Matthew say after six? Because at the end of the sixth trumpet, there's that great earthquake. They all look up and praise God because they've seen, they see Lord coming down, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And that's why at the seventh trumpet, you see the Lord say everything above in heaven and on earth is now his. Because he comes after six and after six. But Luke says, about in eight days. Why? Well, if it was six representing years and six representing years, what do you think the almost or about an eight day is? It means shortly before, kind of close, almost the eighth year. But like the story of Genesis that said, for yet seven days, which meant seven years type and shadow. And then in chapter eight, it was seven more and seven more, which gave us our 777. There was also an after seven days that I told you about is also a representation of days before the seven years. Well, what does after seven days mean? Well, don't need to be a rocket science for that one, right? After seven days would be what? Sometime in the eighth? About in eight days? So if he's coming about in eight days, meaning shortly before the eighth year in the big picture, and it's also a representation of coming after seven days, which is what we just revealed in the story of the ark, and we take this to our count, and we take the count from being the 15th, being the proper count. Whoops, where are we? The 15th being the proper count, as I was saying, Ivan and the Essenes and so forth were saying, well, you know what? Let's prove it a little step further in the story of Exodus in chapter 19 before we go back to chapter 34. Look at what it said. We shared this just recently. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, in the same day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. So how could the Feast of Weeks 
be where they put it on the 6th. You see, even me, when you consider when I was thinking, well, it would be the 8th, how could it really even be that? Because they didn't leave on the 6th of Nisan. They didn't leave on the 8th of Nisan. They left on the 15th, 16th of Nisan. I think it was the 15th of Nisan. They left after the Passover, right? So it wasn't the 6th or the 8th. And if they're coming here in the third month on the same day, then the only way that's to compute is there had to be another week either at the end that's not accounted for or the count, even though they left that Passover, there's this additional week which could account then for that as scenes and them saying that the, the Feast of First Fruits is really that, that Sabbath after, like we were talking about with, uh, with what Ivan says as well. And when we do that from the Torah's count, and we go to after seven days, which is where we are right here, right now, today, we end up right here. What is this? Number one, it's first day of the week. And it truly is. The Jews would celebrate this as the Sabbath, but on the calendar, it actually is the Sabbath. It would be after seven days, like the story of the ark, which would mean sometime in the eighth day, which would be the story of the transfiguration. And it'd be the first of August, which would be the story of the low mass day when they bring the first fruits, which is bread loaves into church. And they have the representation as the Christ in his transfiguration story. Are you kidding me? Do you understand why we're so excited? Do you understand? Look at this. Let's go into Leviticus 23 again. And look at it for the first uh, for the first fruits. Uh, sorry, for the Feast of Weeks. Look at what it says. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves. Two, two loaves of bread with leaven. They are the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Okay? If they are the first fruits of the wheat harvest, they are with leaven because the sin, because it's for man, it's not talking about Christ, and it's related to the story of transfiguration. Okay? It's talking about the story of the transfiguration and, and when, when Christ went and, and he was changed. Okay? And they're also relating it to who? Well, here it is. If it's the first fruits of the wheat harvest, what happens? So that means this, this means they're already there. The bride has been taken. But you're not to observe her. You don't observe her until the year's end. And how do we know she's already taken? Well, it says because then you can't observe her yet. You're going to observe her at the year's end. So what do we know still has to take place in our end time understanding? The 40 days of the Son of Man. So he's not going to be able to observe her yet because he's got to fulfill his 40 days here. And we've shared many times, for those who are trying to understand this 40 days of the Son of Man first, you really want to go watch that video, that intro video about the 40 days. You're going to see the enemy has already warned his Muslim people. Okay, he's already warned them. They know somebody's coming for 40 days. And yet the church had no clue. Okay, he's warned them so that he can defend by having said, we already know this guy's coming. He's going to be the enemy. But he's not. And all the Christians left, most are going to fall for it. Listen to this. So what would happen? The bride is gone, but cannot be observed until the 40 days of the Son of Man comes to an end. And what are they referring to? Then the story of the transfiguration, right? The after six days, which is really after seven, about an eight days. And what does that begin? The 40 days of the Son of Man. And what's the story with Moses? It begins the 40 days and the 40 nights. And what is it? When he came down from those 40 days. 
His face was shining, remember? His face shone, his skin, they had to put a veil over him. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, look at these pictures. This is Loma State, okay? Check this out. Remember, we know there's paganism. We get it. There's the horns and the sun in the horns. Do you know what that's a representation of? Look, everything's wheat. Everything is ready wheat. And what? Two loaves of bread, loaves of bread, loaves of bread, all of them having leaven. Everything else is ready wheat, ready to be harvested. And then you've got the horns with the sun between it. Are you ready? This lines up with Ivan's count. Look at this, June 9th. Let me show you this. June 9th, okay? Let's go back to the calendar. Remember we were saying, well, how could we, how should we maybe count the Feast of Weeks? Okay? Knowing what we know, the proper count now. I was saying here, right, which would make this one the first one. Ivan said, and the Essenes say, no, this would be the first one. And when we count from here, we end up coming to here, which would be the 15th day of the month, which is correct, according to their count. And after seven would take us to August 1st. So the sun between the horns of Taurus, let's see what it looks like on June 9th for the beginning of that count. Hello. I took a, this is a picture, so I can't move anything, but. 2021, June 9th, and I didn't have, I just had a random time, 11 a.m., and look what happens. There's the horns, there's the sun, there's Aldebaran 50 in the ox head Aleph, and the moon is as the other eye, Ayin. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Lord, please let this be it. There it is. This is this is like a, a sign of the of the count. The revelation that it was Taurus. It's like an it's a complete, it's been something completely missed in the churches. People might want to say, oh, this is all pagan, this is all pagan. You might want to reconsider what you're learning in your church. Because there's a whole bunch, obviously, that we're sharing and revealing that's being missed. And for something to be corrupted, it had to first be something. You get it? It's all about the first fruits of the wheat harvest. For what? The spring wheat, brothers and sisters. The spring wheat. This is awesome. This is awesome. Let me show you something else. Lamas, okay, Lomas is a time of sacrifice and celebration, okay? Uh, there's a lot of the pagan stuff, of course. And it talks about, uh, you know, when the sun is at its strongest because after August 1st, everything starts to decrease, right? So it's the highest point and the, and the, the, the best point for the harvesting for, for the spring wheat. But what you find out is something else. It is that. But here's what else comes along the way. There's one other element to this holiday. Death. This is the last six weeks of the sun's full power. And after that, the days get shorter and colder. It's called the dark crooked one, which is of an Irish mist, uh, uh, myth. Okay, Death, the dark crooked one who's coming, even lined up with this time frame. Okay, this also makes me think of um, of uh, what ends up coming with the red horse rider. See, the red horse rider is given the great sword after the 40 days of the Son of Man, right? But is the red horse rider maybe already here but not yet given the sword? Well, what if we go have a quick look at something in Zechariah chapter 1? who we now know is Judah, 
Okay, not the house of Israel, but the house of Judah. I understand it says Shabbat. Okay, but we can also understand that in a Judah count, it's not the same. You see, like the Ethiopian calendar. You can go to this liturgical calendar that was talked about in this feast. And you can follow it all the way through and see all the different biblical calendars. And it even talks about the Egyptian calendar, where many of the ancient artifacts have been found too. That is also the origin of Abib as the 10th month of the non-lunar Ethiopian calendar. So you see, Abib, according to the, the, the Hebrew calendar, has it from Nisan, but in the Ethiopian one, Nisan or Abib was, excuse me, the 10th month. So I bring that up to say there are going to be differences in these counts. You see, look at what they have. The first day of the Ethiopian year for years between 1900 and 2099 inclusive is usually September 11th is the equivalent on the Gregorian calendar. September 11th, brothers and sisters, is the first day of the year on the Ethiopian calendar. Well, that's very close to the Hebrew calendar from the count of Judah's perspective of which this is all about now. Why Judah is about to be removed here in September for the next seven years. Because it's all about the ox, as I kept saying. So here's what I'm getting at. If we go look into Zechariah to Judah, understanding that they count Tishri as the start of the year, what would the 24th day of the 11th month be on this calendar? There it is. August 2nd would be the 24th day of the 11th month according to the Hebrew calendar. Guys, we're close. We're close. See, there's the first fruits. You can go read about it. Ancient Greece, what they did. The transfiguration connection, see, they go from the first and then to the sixth. And the reason the sixth, I just told you. What calendar, right? What calendar? How is this all figured out? Man. We're right here as I speak to you. And just when you think maybe this is where I'm going to leave it with this mind-blowing festival falling in line with this count, I'm not going to leave it at that just in case. Because I told you earlier that this is about nitty-gritty details. Maybe that'll be the title. Maybe make a little note. I'm just going to write nitty Gritty, just in case. <laughs> My own little side note. See, I never know what the titles are going to be. <clears throat> All right. This is about the nitty gritty details. And so this is what I want to share with you next in these nitty gritty details. And that is. When we look up this history of 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 the timing of Exodus, the timing of the wheat harvest. When we go to Exodus chapter 34, and we see that the, the, the first fruits has been taken in of the wheat harvest, the 40 days of the Son of Man type and shadow of Moses begins. There's something else to understand. You see, we've shared here many times, you see this Exodus? You notice how I don't go, for, I don't go from 19 to 34, but we go in reverse from 34 to 19. And the reason that has happened is because it was revealed in this chapters to years. And 
what you can find built into these chapters to years, you you find these events that relate along the way to events of the end of days, okay? The four, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. You can go into these, and when you understand what you're looking for, like in John chapter 14, for example, in John chapter 14, it's the Lord saying, hey, I go to prepare a place, and when I return, I'll receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you are also. Well, that's exactly what happens in the seventh year of seals. The Lord will return and gather them to himself, okay? You can go to Genesis, and when you go to Genesis 14, it's the first time that um, that the high priest Mel Melchizedek is announced and, and that he's spoken about. Well, that's the exact same time. When Christ comes at the end of, uh, of seals in the seventh year, he is the high priest, right? Christ is that high priest referred to as Melchizedek. And so we understand the events with enough study, the events and the details taking place during that time, you will see these connections within conversations taking place that equal events to these years during the tribulation. And so what happened is that's the same thing with the book of Exodus from chapter 34 to 19. This is why you have the bride of Christ, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, taken and the 40 days of the Son of Man beginning before the 14 years begin. That's exactly correct. It's exactly correct. But do you know what else it is? If this was the beginning of the story, like I showed you when they were um, the third month and it was the self-same day, this is the time frame in here when Moses goes to the mountain the first time for 40 days. Well, then we know he goes again, maybe at three days, and then he goes up when we know he goes for 40 days again. I believe there's a total of, uh, I think it's believed that eight times he's gone up and down, but three times were the 40 days and 40 nights. Do you know that the last time he went up for 40 days and 40 nights was the one in Exodus chapter 34 that we're talking is pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ? It's the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ and his 40 days of the Son of Man beginning. It's the third time, not the first time, because we're going in reverse. So knowing this, we're going to take a look at those times, the third time that Moses went up. The third time he went up for 40 days. And do you know what it was? Now, remember what I said. We've already covered this August 1st. But I want, to re I want to make sure everybody, in case this still quite isn't it, I still want you to be strengthened. I still want you to be empowered to remember the beginning of this video. We have it. We have the revelation. We know it's this year. We know it's the fall feast, all right? We know it. We've understood it. But if it's not by tomorrow, we may have one more week to go to the time of Elul chapter, uh, uh, Elul 1, okay? And there's a couple reasons that I bring this up. One is we're looking in reverse. So if the four times that Moses went up the mountain and the last time he went up, it's believed that it was Elul 1, you see? If you go look up the history of Elul 1 or the month of Elul, you'll see on Elul 1, they have Moses ascended the uh, Mount Sinai for the third time. It was the third time. Of course, we're looking in reverse. So that, that's, a, that's appropriate. And if you remember, I can't remember where it was, but a few videos ago, <laughs> I, I was tentative because when I shared it, it showed that this time frame went to the Feast of Atonement, right? If you remember a few videos ago, I shared something in relation to, I can't remember exactly what it was, and that's why I can't find it. I, I can't find that little memory jogger. Anyways, it, it ended up equaling the Feast of Atonement. And I said, oh, but I, not, that, not because I think it's going to Atonement, all right? 
And again, it has nothing to do with us being here to that time. But is it possible that the 40 days end at atonement? Is it possible that the 40 days end at atonement? And I'm going to break this down quickly so you can understand. I'm not just reaching. I'm going to show you this, <clears throat> not only to give you encouragement, but because we know this is it, there are there are details that we're just trying to, to, to cover, okay? To stay on top of this as we continue to reveal and put this awesome picture together, okay? And that is that if Moses went up the last time for 40 days on Elul 1, and we know that Elul 1 is the reference to when Moses went up in, in Exodus chapter 34, when the first fruits were already brought in, then is it possible that the bride of Christ maybe goes by sometime around the 8th, right? The 8th into the ninth. Is it possible? Well, here's the first question that comes to mind. That if the reference to Moses, and you know what? I believe, I remember reading, I couldn't find it this time, but I remember reading a few years back that it was also believed that um, that Jonah, his 40 days, also began on Elul 1. Okay? So there's that as well, because we know Christ is going to be as Jonah was. So. It's possible, but I'm going to give you some detail now as to why. And the first question that comes to mind is that if it's not by tomorrow, and we're now looking for this time frame of around of, of Elul 1, what do we do about the fact that they, the Jews, are not to observe? Remember, if we're in the 70th year, which we are, and it began at Tishri of last year, and it will end at Tishri of 2021. We know that last year they observed the third of Tishri fasting and mourning in the seventh month. And we know that they observed this year the ninth of Av, the fasting and mourning of the fifth month. Which means after having done it for 70 years, we know that they will never observe them as fastings and mournings ever again, according to Zechariah chapter 7. With that in mind, how is it that then the 40 days of the Son of Man could begin at a little one like Moses and end at the tenth of Tishri, which is Yom Kippur or atonement, yet the third of Tishri or the fasting in the morning of the third month not happen? How is it that this cannot happen? Well, I'm going to show you. And that's because, first of all, knowing that the third time Moses and this connection we're looking for, I'm not saying the bride is here, guys. The bride will be gone, okay? But the 40 days of the Son of Man were some of those workers that we've talked about may work with the Lord during this time. We've shared in a recent video how there was this connection potentially to atonement. But there's always this issue then that comes up right here, which relates to the year's end and them not observing the third of Tishri? Well, the answer to that, I'm going to show you, may be found in Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, verse 21, as we start to wind this down, I want to show you guys what it says. We know, we've studied Luke 21 so much, right? We know it relates to the 40 days of the Son of Man and the events taking place. We know this is the time of the red horse rider when the sword will be given and it'll be nation against nation, earthquakes, all these things, the beginning of tribulation, right? We know Luke says, but before all these, meaning but before the 14 years begins, but before Mark's discourse of nation against nation begins, there's a period of time that comes first. And we shared about this, I think, in the last video or the last couple of videos, the conversation about um, uh, Armin Wolf. Okay? It turns out we've got a sister who uh, their family's last name, I guess through, through their lineage, 
is Wolf with two Fs, which apparently is pretty rare. So it might even be family related with uh, somebody in here. So having said that, when we shared with that, we shared how as soon as the bride of Christ leaves, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be arrests. Things are going to happen almost instantaneously because of the chaos of millions of people vanishing. Many people will wake up realizing what they missed and will cry out for Christ in repentance. Many, I mean, it's going to be absolute craziness. And we see that this portion of time, this 40 days, begins right away with they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering up into synagogues and into prisons. You shall be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it'll, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Okay, but don't worry about what you're going to say, right? The Holy Spirit is going to give you the words. Family and brethren are going to turn against each other. This is where the turning against each other comes. And then it says, some of you, they shall cause to be put to death. Okay, we're going to come back to this in a moment. But not a hair on your head will be hurt. Okay, nothing, not a hair on your head will, will, will perish in your patience, possess you, your souls. Okay. Don't worry about it. Be willing to die. It's okay. You're going to be in the throne room. You're going to be under the altar. Remember, not part of that specific bride of Christ, but those who willingly put their life on the line for Christ, for his word, for truth. This is the group that gets resurrected at the end when he returns after 6,000 years that will rule with him as priests for the millennial reign. Now, listen to this. Here's the main piece in, in this portion that I want to tell you about. This is also part of the 40 days. It says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation, the destruction of it, is near. Not happened yet. Because as we've taught, the surrounding of Jerusalem being compassed with armies will happen during the 40 days. At some point during the 40 days, this compassing about will take place. But the destruction of it won't take place till after the 40 days and the Holy Ghost has anointed that group that's going to remain, those apostles and some of the disciples that are with them. And so what do we see? Listen to this. This is all in the 40 days, okay? Then let them which are in Judea. What's Judea? Remember, we're not talking about Israel. We're talking about Judah. This is all about Judea. Okay? Judah, Jerusalem. Let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter here into. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Meaning once the attack comes, this is the beginning of all these things that will be fulfilled. But the surrounding and the fleeing and the departing out and not letting anybody come in is happening when? During the 40 days, at some point in the 40 days. With that being the case, as it's literally telling us right here, they won't be observing the fasting and the mourning of the seventh month, which is the fasting and mourning of Gedalia. You see, there's no way they're going to observe this anyways. Because by this point, they're going to be surrounded and fleeing, brothers and sisters. They will not have the opportunity to observe the fasting and the mourning of the seventh month ever again. Let me see if this helps clear it up for you as a possibility. I pray it's not. We always want sooner, don't we? Obviously. But this is what? 30 days. Okay? It's 30 days for the month of Elul. 29, 30 days, right? It's the month of Elul. So if it's 30 days, how many days are left of the 40? 10 days are left in the 40 days. Okay, 10 days are left in the 40 days. So we see that when they see they're being compassed about, they're to flee and everybody get out. And what's going on at the same time? 
where there were people being captives and being brought into synagogues and prisons, and some of them are going to be put to death. Do you remember when we shared who these some of you are? Remember at the beginning I shared with you the incredible revelation of the seven churches? Well, in the revelation of the seven churches, the first church, which is Ephesus, is about the new apostles. The new apostles that will be chosen that are waiting in that upper room, wherever the Lord has them, that he will have chosen at the beginning of the 40 days. And they are going to be his 12 or however many it might work out to be. I believe it'll still be 12. And they, they will also have apostles, uh, disciples. Okay, The disciples that they will have are from the church of Smyrna. They're the church of Smyrna. They're going to go through tribulation. They're going to be suffering a lot. They're not going to have a lot of money or anything. They're going to be chased by Satan, you see? And what's going to happen? Listen to what it says. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you. See the same wording as Luke 21. The devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Oh, I just got to... There it is, brothers and sisters. Oh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> Give me a moment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, man. You can't help but tear up when that happens. My arms down my back, my spine down through my legs. Just a whole <laughs> went right through. <laughs> I was just talking with my wife about this a little while ago. And I did it just from memory. You know, I wasn't reading it. But uh, what does it say? You shall have tribulation 10 days. You shall have tribulation 10 days. Now, we know that the apostles, yes, this group is going to work during all of seals. They're the foundation layers. It's also Smyrna. Smyrna is this group that puts their necks on the line for the churches of the Gentiles. We know that this 10 days is representing 10 days that as they're in prison, as they're being captive during the time of tribulation as well, that they will endure things for 10 days before they're put to death, okay? However, there is another meaning as well. And it's this one connected to Luke 21. So prepare your hearts because um, if that whoosh that I just felt, that goose bump all over my body was the confirmation, it just said in some that some of you may be tried that and you, sorry, and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Did you hear that? And you shall have tribulation 10 days. Meaning, if Elul 1 is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man, when the tribulation begins at Tishri, and it's still the 10 days remaining of the Son of Man, right? this would also be what? Well, they were being surrounded. If they're being surrounded at about this time, and they're now, they see this surrounding taking place, and they're being told to flee out when they see this take place, they're not going to observe the seventh month. They're going to be too busy fleeing, avoiding captivity. They experienced this, what, 75 years ago, right? 75 to 80 years ago. Won't take them long to remember what they see, what's coming. But unfortunately, they're not prepared because they don't think it's coming for them again. They don't realize their disobedience for the last 50 years. That's why Christ is coming to warn them. And this group that's being captured, that's being brought before rulers and put into prisons, that Satan has, has captured using them, it says they're going to have tribulation. 
10 days. 10 days. Is that it, brothers and sisters? Is this that 10 days in the reference of all things beginning? We know they're going to continue on. We know there are going to be others that will remain for the seven years. But let's not also forget Luke 21 and his 40 days. Because as we follow Luke 21, you could see that there's captivity of these people taking place during this time, right off the start after the escape. Chaos ensues. And some of these people are taken captive right away. Just think of that Armin Wolf vision that we just talked about. They're, they're being taken captive. People are breaking in right away. That's why Satan is getting is the one putting them into prison. He knows where they're going to be. He's going to bring them in. And what's going to happen? Fear not. Because why? He says, some of you are going to be put into prison. And for 10 days, you're going to have tribulation. Why only 10? Is it because the 40 days will be over? And they'll be under the altar. They're, they're not the escape group. Right? But they're the ones willing to, to die for the Lord. They'll be under the altar, still in the throne room of God. Hmm. Keep our hearts ready, guys. Keep your hearts prepared. We may be looking at a little over a week still to go, a week, eight days, whatever it is. But no one understand that we're here. This has got to be the time when they flee. You see that? If they're going to have tribulation 10 days for those that are working with the Lord as those disciples, putting their necks on the line, then when do you think it's time for them to flee from the land? Wouldn't it make sense that it's also at the same time right here? Of course it would, because this is the beginning of tribulation. This is when they would have to start fleeing at the beginning of trumpets, which means they will not observe the seventh month fasting and mourning which they wouldn't anyways when tens of millions of people have freaked out vanishing around the world. And why would it be Satan that's casting some of them in? Because it's Satan who's, who's um, in, in the raven. Remember? If we go back to the story with the raven, right? At the beginning of the 13 years, or or if or, or uh, uh, um, Ishmael, right? At the beginning for 13 years, the representation of the raven, the representation of the Arab, right? Not specifically Satan, but Satan working through them, right? Through the enemy. Wow, it never dawned on me, guys, that this could be that representation of those 10 days for them. But you see what happens? It changed nothing about the start of tribulation at trumpets. It's just that the 40 days may appear to go to atonement. May appear to go to atonement. And we've got some scripture that, that might be showing us this, this is possible. So I just wanted to share that and add that little piece at the end for you guys, just in case we're still here in the next couple days. Man, is this ever awesome. This is wild. I, I sure hope it's this, man. <laughs> why why wouldn't we want <laughs> why wouldn't we rather the day earlier, right? I mean the the soon as possible. I mean, of course we want the soon as possible, right? Man. But just be encouraged. Stay encouraged. Encourage each other. Come and join us in the forum. And understand, guys. Man, understand we have understood. Okay? Try not to get too discouraged, too disappointed. Because we're here. Regardless of that exact detail of the count, 
the 14 years, the 21, the thousands, all of it is true. And before I keep going on and on, I just want to bring these things back to light for you guys. This, this reveals it. This is the evidence of the whole thing. When this evidence was laid out, we didn't even know the answers yet. We were just counting the Sabbaths. We didn't even know what it meant. Only that if it was true, it needed to line up with the final two sevens. And it did all the way back to the birth of Christ. So brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Be strong. Be strengthened in spirit. And know that we are about to stand before the Son of Man. Watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I love you guys. I love your families. We're praying for you. God bless you all. And I pray you will never hear from me this way again, but that we will see each other first. And if it's the other way, don't worry. I'll be back if need be. I love you guys. God bless you. Bye for now.